Hello and welcome to this week's vlog from Madison's. Well, last week I vowed that this week I would not talk about stamp duty holiday deadlines. The spring budget is obviously due uh, on the 3rd of March and I thought I'm not going to talk about it until then. But this week the papers were all about a predicted three month extension to that stamp duty holiday. It should be remembered that was just the papers speculating on it. Rishi hasn't announced that yet. But of course, it's highly likely when they all come out and say that, that they've heard something, they've had a tip off, some information has been leaked and that the stamp duty holiday will be extended till the end of June for England and Northern Ireland. We'll wait to see what Scotland and Wales do and how they react to it. And of course, that end of June ties in with the whole end of the government's four, poor, four point plan to move out of lockdown, getting the schools back, getting shops and uh, hairdressers and beauticians open again, uh, getting restaurants, pubs back open, and then returning to full normality with events, theatres, um, and all the usual things that we have missed so long now for uh, coming up for a year. Um, industry response to the extension deadline has been mixed actually. I mean, many uh, feel that it's been great to bolster the property market, to continue to support the economy and encourage people to step onto the property market. Of course, we're coming into the very, very busy spring market and closing it at the end of March was really counterintuitive with the fact that the spring market could have been moving into full force and then there'd be this thing happening in the background of the stamp duty holiday deadline ending buyers missing out, they'd factored in a saving of up to £15,000 on their stamp duty, suddenly missing out and would that have created a, a cliff edge of property transactions to collapse with um, deals either being renegotiated or buyers withdrawing because they can't afford it. And of course a lot of the delay has been caused by um, the sh extreme backlogs in the system, not just from the searches, which of course are outside many of many people's control. Um, so good news, many feel for many for, feel that this petition of 150,000 signatures to extend it because the property market would fall off a cliff edge if it wasn't extended right in the heart of the busy spring period. Other people though feel that it could just be kicking the can down the, down the road, so to speak. All you've done is push forward and extend that deadline um, to have another cliff edge happening at the end of June. So more buyers now scrabbling to get onto the property market um, and take advantage of that deadline. Um, I, I'm not sure, I mean, I'm surprised that Rishi didn't just do a tapered relief, i.e. extend it for those who were already in the system and who through no fault of their own simply wouldn't meet it. My gut feeling though is it um, the busy spring market will pick off, but I think many solicitors and indeed estate agents, ourselves included, will have to caveat with buyers that you might miss that deadline and make sure that the deal hold, holds tight if that deadline is indeed missed. Um, so I'm not, I don't think it'll be quite as bad as what was certainly what we were predicting, um, but it will certainly be very, very busy. We are extremely busy as always. Um, lots of valuations, lots of people wanting to come to market. Um, I'm at sealed bids on two properties this week, have negotiated successfully offers on another two. Um, we're getting a lot of our pipeline, those deals that were chundering through through the system. Amazes me how quickly some can go and how slowly others can go. It's really, uh, you do go as quickly as your, or as slowly as your weakest link, there's no doubt about it. And of course the rental market continues to boom as a result of all of this. Many people, very keen to move, recognise that they need to get themselves into a highly, highly proceedable position. So of course you have a new, a new uh, sort of element of people who would not normally rent, they would normally be house buyers, moving into rented accommodation just temporarily uh, to be poised, ready to bounce on that property, the right one that they see it. The one that we launched in East Street in Tunbridge, um, <coughs> that proved extremely popular actually went to sealed bids. Um, doesn't happen very often, but um, yeah, good stock on rentals absolutely flies off the shelf, there's no doubt about it. Um, and we like to help all our sellers uh, find their rental if possible. Well, a fabulous um, article that's caught my eye on Right Move this week was about a great 1960s property on the edge of Lake Windermere up in Cumbria. 1960s architecture is going through a bit of a resurgence and many of the grand designs, ultra-modern properties that are now built have lots of 1960s um, themes in them. And this one is beautifully preserved, intact, 
um, hasn't come to the market for 60 years and if you have a look at it it looks absolutely amazing it's on a guide of 850,000 pounds and it's got stunning world heritage views of the Lakeland Fells and Lake Windermere but it's the interior that is grabbing prospective buyers attention um, the unique time capsule of a home I mean it's definitely in need of a thorough refurbishment but my goodness look at those carpets a uh, funky green uh, in places mesmerizing wallpaper um, a rolling stones record playing on a vintage turntable is all that's missing in my mind for that one um, sky blue kitchen cabinets wood paneling on the hallway ceiling very fashionable again wood paneling on ceilings and those bold bold curtains um, I think that's great and it brings me to mind of a property that we're going to be launching to sneak peek I haven't got any photos to show you just yet but it is a great 1960s property that that architecture has been embraced by the current owners and it is super cool stones throw from where I'm sitting at the moment we're going to be going to market a guide of 795,000 it's a three bedroom townhouse really really cool but two that I can show you right now um, let's talk about Warwick Park it's very very close to us very popular location close to the high street the Pantiles the mainline station and has a range of property architectures on there you've got Edwardian Victorian property um, some very ultra moderns filling in some gaps there and then a sort of range of 1960s 1970s so I've got one from each era to show you uh, one from the 1960s but extended heavily by the current owner on a guide of just under a million pounds lots of accommodation space a big garden proving super super popular phone us quick if you're interested in that one and another one proving equally as, as popular um, a little bit later more Edwardian roots sorry earlier Edwardian roots for this one a beautiful big five bedroom semi-detached property um, exquisitely presented a lovely big open plan kitchen diner generous accommodation and coveted off-road parking and a driveway both of those have off-road parking and driveways actually but the big period ones often don't have it the ones that flank on the right hand side as you head up Warwick Park well I hope you have a great week I hope you've enjoyed my vlog and I look forward to seeing you next week bye bye